I don't know of how many gifts there are that are out there that can have an impact on an entire state. Uh, but this is certainly one of them, and we're obviously tremendously grateful for the Harold Alfon Foundation, and not just the support now, because they've done plenty in the past, but, but certainly for this gift and the opportunity to really shape our future. That's UMaine's new athletic director, Jude Killey, talking about the gift from the Harold Alfon Foundation, a $240 million investment in the University of Maine system that will bring transformative change to all campuses, and in particular, UMaine Athletics. I'm Ron Lisnett, and this is the Main Question Podcast. Of that astounding $240 million, $90 million is earmarked for UMaine Athletics. It's a gift that certainly piqued the interest of Jude Killey as he interviewed for the athletic director's position at UMaine and subsequently began his tenure in January 2023. His challenge will be how to best maximize this opportunity. Killy comes to UMaine with a proven track record of fundraising, developing and building facilities, and managing people at two previous gigs, Miami of Ohio and the University of Pittsburgh. As he's now had a chance to settle into his new position for a little while, we had the opportunity to sit down with the leader of the Black Bear Athletics program for a wide-ranging discussion. How will this gift help Black Bear student athletes and coaches? What can it do for the larger community and the state of Maine? Beyond that, what does the changing landscape of college athletics look like going forward? Why and how do college sports have the ability to bring a community together? How do you engage people to support and invest in Black Bear student athletes and programs? And our question for this episode, how does college athletics contribute to the mission of higher education in general? Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I know it's been a whirlwind for you in the last couple of months. Uh, is the family here settled, first of all? Uh, they're not. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm solo. My wife and daughters are coming up actually this week. Believe it or not, we're going to go house hunting for a second time. Okay. So, yeah, with uh, Emily Ellis and her team at Berkshire Hathaway. So we're excited about that opportunity this weekend. Great. Well, I thought I thought we'd start with maybe a, a lightning round of questions just to sort of get let people have a chance to get to know you. So okay. you were born where? Where'd you grow up? Yeah. So I was born actually in Mishawaka, Indiana, which is right by South Bend. My dad was actually a grad school uh, grad student at Notre Dame at that point in time. And then I grew up where I just moved from, which is Oxford, Ohio. That was where most of my childhood was is from. So. Uh, earliest sports memory? Oof. Earliest sports memory. I have to think about that. Um, probably youth league soccer, you know, just kicking the ball around. And Leonard Hell was a field that was, you know, pretty close, close to our house in terms of actually playing. Uh, in terms of going, I'm sure it would have been... Uh, we're watching probably a Cubs game with my dad, you know, in some capacity. Growing up next, near Cincinnati was Riverfront Stadium, so going to see the Cubs play the Reds probably at Riverfront would be, you know, one of the more formative things growing up. Right. So. Uh, favorite athlete, hero growing up? Yeah. Uh, favorite athlete, definitely Walter Payton. Okay. So love, huge, huge Walter Payton fan. So uh, you probably could have picked a variety of people, you know, Cubs, big Cubs fans. So, you know, Ryan Sandberg was my guy growing up. Him and Rick Sutcliffe were two of my favorite players. Um, but but, but uh, Michael Jordan, Walter Payton, you know, those would all be in the top mix. And Walter's at the top of the list. Yeah, great. Best sports moment for you personally? Any any uh, any <laughs> any hero moments for you? Uh, I don't think I've had any personal uh, right. sports hero moments. They've all been in, in fandom. In so, fandom. That's yeah. okay, too. Yeah. That's okay, too. Um, if you could be at one athletic event in the past that you've heard of that you d didn't get a chance to go to, what might it be? Yeah, well, I, I, I definitely, um, I'll give you two answers. From a personal standpoint, um, I would have loved to have been at uh, Game 7 of the World Series, Cubs beating the Indians, now Guardians, in, in 2016. I would, have, I, would, I would have gone to that for sure. Um, or I would have taken the Super Bowl with the, you know, the, the Bears beating the Patriots, which you know, might not be popular some of our fan base to say, but that's a reality. Um, from, a, from a job standpoint, I mean, it would have been pretty cool to be 93 or 99 to see us win a national title, right? Sure. So Yeah, I was there in 93, and it, oh, was, it was cool. That's, that's for awesome. sure. Um, so you, you've been on the job a few months now. Um, what have you learned? Any significant uh, surprises one way or the other? What, uh, I'm sure you're taking a lot of meetings, meeting a lot of people, and yeah. uh, taking a lot of notes, right? Yeah, all, all, all the above. So, you know, <clears throat> one thing I'll say from a search process standpoint, whether it was the search firm or the university administration or those involved, they painted a really clear picture of, of what was happening here and what needed to happen. Um, so I've been pleasantly surprised that this is accurate as it has been. Uh, usually you're like, oh, I didn't know that was coming, or what about this? You know, are there some, some things circumstantially that are slightly different, of course, but contextually everything's really similar. So that's been great. Um, and then 
I, I actually had this conversation with someone earlier today. I knew coming in that the coaching staff was really talented collectively. They're even better than I thought, you know, which is, which is an awesome surprise. So the, the, the people have been great. I know when you and I talked before at basketball, you know, that's been really consistent. Uh, so that's been, you know, even better than I anticipated in a really positive way. And that's half the battle, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. So talk about your background. You spent time at Pitt at uh, Miami. Um, yeah. How'd you get into this line of work and, and what do you like about it? Yeah, I think there's a couple of pieces. So um, first and foremost, um, I've been around higher education my whole life. You know, my, my dad actually was a college professor. Uh, so I grew up on a college campus. My mom was in education. She taught in elementary school and special education. So, you know, was around that and growing up on a college campus. I just love the feel of being on a campus. And then, you know, you, you, you dovetail that with the athletic experience, right? You and I experience these kind of things in life about just what you, what you love about sport and what you learn from sport, teamwork, camaraderie, discipline, accountability. And so I think what I've really found through life is that those are my two, my two favorite passions, right? Education, in particular higher education, and then athletics. So, um, so th- those two things combined really drove me to work in this field. Um, and, and what I've learned from that over time is that they've just really helped create special opportunities for people, right? Young people, in particular student athletes, that some of them maybe wouldn't have otherwise. So that's 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 really what drives me to be in this field is to help create those opportunities and and develop growth opportunities for young people. Yeah, it's certainly a, uh, there's there's never a dull moment, right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so your two previous stops were at Pitt was an ACC school, Miami yeah. Mid American Conference. Yeah. What are some uh, things that are common to the athletic experiences at? You know, all Division One institutions, yeah. and what are maybe some unique things that uh, UMaine offers, or you know, is different from what you might have seen elsewhere? Sure. So I, I think I've been really, really fortunate um, for the other career stops that I've had at the Division One level. I mean, at Pitt, at Miami, and now at Maine, I think they were all very student athlete focused. You know, which is great, regardless of ACC, Mid American Conference. You know. America East, no matter what the conference is, you know they've all been really student athlete focused, and I've loved that about each one of my stops. Um, certainly, there's you know differences in terms of staffing. You know, we, I've talked about this uh, with uh, another colleague earlier today. You know, there's a larger scale staff and a larger scale budget. Those are obvious ramifications, but I think at the core, all of them are very very similar in terms of their approach. Um, the piece that's been really really different about Maine is that I think that from a community standpoint there's a greater opportunity to bring people in. You know, in a bigger place, it's harder to do. You know, there's this great family atmosphere and connectivity here that I think you can't replicate at other places. So we need to utilize that as an advantage for us, you know, as a disadvantage. Right. Uh, and so that sort of dovetails into the next question, that UMaine is the only Division One athletics program in yeah. the state. Is that a big deal? It's a huge deal. So I, I think there's, a, there's a, a couple different angles on that. I mean, you know, if you look at some of the flagships – right in other states you know they're a flagship but there's also other division one schools in those states right i came from one you know in, in the state of ohio um you know there are multiple division one schools in the state of ohio but to be in a state where you're the the flagship and the only division one school is is pretty remarkable and there's some uh, you know pompous and circumstance that comes with that and i was thinking about this earlier today so if you just put it in terms of numbers right we're an r1 institution which is basically you know, less than 4% of the schools in the country are an R1 institution. If you look at it from an athletic perspective, less than 20% of all college sports are Division One level, right? Now that's really? D1, you D2, know. D3, NAI, junior college, right? There's, a, there's about almost 2,000 schools that have college athletics in some capacity. So, you know, we're about 20%. Well, if you chop that down to just Division One football playing schools, FBS and SES, that number drops to about 15%. So, you know, to be at that level, you know, across our country of, you know, hundreds of millions of people, like that's, that's a pretty, pretty special niche. So exciting times certainly are, are, are afoot here at UMaine with the, the gift from the Alphon yeah. Foundation. I mean, I'm sure that piqued your interest right away when you, when you started looking at this position. Can you put that opportunity into perspective for us? $90 million coming to yeah. athletics that is going to not only benefit student athletes and coaches here, but community i mean there's so many ways that plays out so uh, paint the big picture for that uh, yeah so so the the uniqueness of it is absolutely i mean piqued my attention would be more than appropriate um i don't know of any other gift of that size you know from an athletic standpoint in the country right certainly at the fcs level you know or below 
there may be something at the FBS level that exists out there. I know there was a T Boone Pickens, maybe you know, out at Oklahoma State, something like that. But it's it's one of the top five gifts in the history of college athletics. I mean, it's certainly top ten, right? But but I think top five or or or, 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 or lower, if you will. Um, so that's really uh, transformative, and I think our responsibility is to maximize that opportunity. And what I mean by that is, is we've got to provide the best opportunity we can for our facilities and venues, you know, for our student athletes, right, and for our coaches. But really, the responsibility is larger than that. It pours into the community, locally, regionally, and into the state. And I think it's really, if, if done right, uh, that'll be a driver to help support the entire state of Maine. So that's, I don't know of how many gifts there are that are out there that can have an impact on an entire state. Uh, but this is certainly one of them. And we're obviously tremendously grateful for the Harold Alphon Foundation and not just the support now because they've done plenty in the past, but but certainly for this gift and the opportunity to really uh, shape our future. So when you were at my, Miami of Ohio, and I'm sure all through your career, you were involved in building facilities, fundraising for facilities. So you know what that looks like a little bit. So how, how do how will this gift, how, how are we going to see it roll out here? What can we look forward to from the, it really falls under the heading of the UMS Transforms. We'll make sure we get the names out yep. there. Um, project and the Alphon Foundation gift is what, what created that. So as this rolls out, yep. what, what is this going to look like? Yeah, so I think there's some pieces that are happening already. So the, the $90 million component is just the athletic component, right? There's a $240 million piece in totality, you know, from the Harold Alphon Foundation, which is magnificent for the entire university. Um, but if you look at the athletic facility piece, so we're going to start with softball, right? So softball's grand opening for our brand new facility is going to be uh, just a couple weeks here on, on uh, the 31st of March. So we'll do the grand opening and start with um, games that weekend. So that'll, that'll begin everything. Uh, field hockey is in the works right now, and the plan is to have field hockey open um, this fall as well. And so I think if you just start with those two, and I think it sends a great message, we're really looking at you know Division I caliber facilities, but we're also looking at um, equity and accessibility. Uh, and again, you know, providing an opportunity for people in the in the community and state um, you know to, to utilize those facilities and to maybe attract some some interest from campers clinics those kind of things and so I think those are great examples of what the entire project's going to mean um, so you know we're in the process of working through what the next stages are and when they're going to be I would have loved to have been able to tell you today here here's what's going to happen next and after this and after that so we're working through that over the course of the next couple of months um, I will tell you uh, that the next thing that is going to happen is we are doing a new video board at Alphond Arena. Uh, so that should be up in time for next year. New video board, um, new ribbon board, and new sound. Uh, so those things will be all great for the fan experience, you know, long overdue. Uh, and so, you know, beyond that, again, we're kind of mapping out the future pieces, but they should address equity, accessibility, um, our Division One status, you know, is a firm, you know, firmly planted Division One status and upward trajectory, uh, and then on top of that, uh, engagement in the community on all levels. So the softball field, I mean, yeah. I, you know, people are going to say this is a great, this is a, a like you say, a solid Division One facility, yeah. but it's so much more high schools. I mean, the community members. I mean, yeah. this thing is going to be used by a whole bunch more people than the the Black Bear softball program. Yeah, we're we're doing we're doing ourselves in the matching challenge and disservice if we only use it for softball for the University of Maine, right, for the Black Bears. So, you know, we'll put some plans in place to be able to utilize that for other events, you know, other other practice play, et cetera, that we can. Um, and, and I think, you know, one thing about it is it's a turf field. So, you know, there's new drainage now. We've got a turf field that you can pretty much play through anything on, right. um, at least precipitation-wise. So that'll afford the opportunity for it to be available a lot more than maybe it had been in the past. And I know you can't talk about timing, but the other yeah. big pieces of it, first of all, is a, a basketball arena. Yeah. That's, that's in the future. And then improvements to Alfond Arena. Uh, yeah. are, are there big ticket items in there? A track, right? Yeah, yeah, track. Uh, we'll, uh, soccer, which will be another big piece for us. Right. You know, we'll do some enhancements to, to baseball at some point within that. Um, the, the footprint of our athletic department uh, in some capacity with looking at Memorial Gym. I mean, these are all things that are discussions about how exactly they're going to happen and when, um, you know, but we'll be addressing all those things. But yeah, the when, when you talk about the Alphonse Arena improvements, you know, beyond the, the pieces that we've committed to from a timing standpoint now, you know, additions to additions and modifications to the 
the Sean Walsh Center until the to the arena that'll be you know focused really on our on our student athletes in terms of locker rooms and player lounges and the multi-purpose center will certainly have that for for men's and women's basketball at a minimum right, right? new locker rooms player lounges team meeting rooms uh, video space all those kind of things I, I just feel like we have so much momentum right now I mean from our coaches to our staff to this university, there's a lot of really great things happening. And and you you asked this before, and I maybe didn't fully answer it this way, but there's a different vibe when shovels are on the ground. You know, everybody peeks up a little bit like, whoa, what's going on? You know, what's that? Right. You know, when you start to put bricks together, you pour the foundation, put bricks together or, or, or foundations or, you know, structures or whatever, you know, people kind of kind of gawk at that a little bit and look and say, hey, what's happening there? And I just think the more that happens, the more people are going to really get interested in what's happening here, frankly, on the entire campus, not just in athletics. Right. So much is changing in the college athletics, you know, the transfer portal student yeah. athletes can have more freedom now nil name image and likeness yeah. um what are some of the trends you're watching are, are these good trends <laughs> or is it is it is, yeah. it's one of those things like it's it's complicated right yeah. like you see on facebook you know we have a relationship it's complicated yeah all all of the above ron right. so um the reality is we're trying to we're trying to follow all those trends that you mentioned, plus a couple others right i mean sports gambling i mean you name it you know all those things that are happening um the historical or the historian in me wants to say that it's not good, right? Uh, just because it's different. I don't know if it's good or bad at this point. I think it's great that our students have an opportunity um, to utilize their name, image, and likeness in some capacity. You know, for what that is, I don't know, but I think it's good that they have the the opportunity to do that. But I think it's in a constant evaluation process. I mean, so much has changed when from when it's rolled out to where it is now to probably where it's going to be in three years that I think it'd be too early to say it's good or it's bad. I know it's different and right. it's going to continue to be different. And if we can't embrace the different, then we're going to be in a really tough space for all of us. Right. It's a double-edged sword because like everybody else in society, college athletes should be able to, you know, have their own brand uh, yeah. like like anybody else does. But if you give uh, an 18-year-old quarterback at Florida $13 million, <laughs> uh, you know, who knows what might happen, right? Yeah. Or if you don't give it to them, then you know then you know what happens because you know how that worked out, right? So, right. Um, I I think I think part of what's interesting to me is that in a lot of ways in college athletics we're our own worst enemies, and what I mean by that is with name, image, and likeness. If we as administrators just would have let this happen twenty five years ago, there wouldn't have been this at- intense immediate pressure, you know, at such high stakes. It would have just been part of it. You know, if you're an art student, you can you can sell sculptures or paintings or whatever. You've always been able to do that. As a student athlete, if you could have done some of these things 10, 15, 25 years ago, I don't think the market demand would be at what it is right now. So again, I think, I think we've, we've created that uh, to an extent. Right. How important is fundraising in modern college athletics? And when you go out, I mean, I'm sure that's a big part of your job. Yeah. What, what's the pitch you make? Why, 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 how do you tell somebody this is a good investment to make? Yeah, well, number one, it's, it's mission critical. You've got to be active on the fundraising front. I mean, any any avenue that you can pursue, you know, where there's an opportunity to generate revenue su- to support your students and programs, you have to do that. Um, and I th- I think the the other part of that is um, it's not for everybody. Not everyone wants to participate in that, and you have to recognize that piece. So you know, we're always looking for like-minded individuals who believe in our mission, in our vision, what we're trying to accomplish. You know, which is really about supporting our students and giving them the best possible experience here, and then helping to uh, give them a platform to be successful uh, in life beyond that. And so, you know, when I talk about the mission vision piece, part of what we're doing as a staff right now is we've done a climate assessment. Um, we've done some cultural surveys. We're trying to hone in on who we are as a department and what we really stand for. We've had this unbelievable success with championships, right, in our classrooms, et cetera. But what are we, what's our DNA? What do we really stand for? So that's going to be part of our communication to all of our donors and prospective donors is, hey, this is who we are, this doesn't change, and this is why we would like you to join us in, in moving forward. So, but that'll, that'll absolutely be, be part of it. But, but right now, just talking about the quality people that we have, you know, whether it's our coaches or our student athletes, our grads, and we're looking at Jeremy Pena in front of us here. Right. Right. Um, yeah, because we have uh, on the cover of the main alumni magazine <laughs> as a former baseball player who was 
I think he was the MVP of the championship series and then the World Series, right? He was. And so so we've got a lot of great people to brag about, right, um, who have done, who did wonderful things here at the University of Maine and who are doing wonderful things beyond that. And so I think, you know, that's that's one of the things that you certainly want to talk about and highlight right. uh, in some capacity. Right. So at its best, college athletics can, can bring together a community, a, a campus, a yeah. state like, like nothing else. And we talked about the 93 hockey championship. Yeah. I remember – coming up the highway there were people on the bridges with you know banners and and at the airport i mean the whole state got behind that like nothing you, you've ever seen and i suppose if you went to the airport in dallas and said what do you know about the university of maine you know a while ago anyway it would have been oh, they have a pretty good hockey team right? right so uh so that's sort of how athletics um can be the front porch for a for a, a, a university, but um, have you seen that happen where a state gets behind something, uh, a team or a person, or and, and what is it about college athletics that it has that power? Yeah, I, I, I yes, um, and I'll I'll come back to that in a minute. But I I think it's you know it's pride, it's connectivity, it's passion. You know, um, sport is just it's a microcosm of life. Right, and you can consolidate that into whether it's you know an hour or forty-five minutes or two hours about everything that kind of happens in life, and it's that emotional roller coaster. So I, I think that's part of what what people enjoy about it, you know, um, is that it is that. But then it's also a distraction from other things that you have going on in life, good right. or, good or bad as well. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I really think that the pride and the connectivity pieces are are incredibly important, um, and those are those are things that that I think we you know we offer here from a sports standpoint for people to follow. Um, but uh, you asked about have I seen it happen. So when I was at Miami, we, we did uh, go to the Frozen Four in back-to-back years. And the first year we went was in Washington, D.C. And walking out of the pregame experience, you know, people are driving in Washington, D.C. with flags out of their car. Like, I thought that Miami University had taken over Washington, D.C., Right. Like not something that you think would happen from a small Ohio town. And so, you know, but people come out of the woodwork, right? Whether you're a hockey fan or not a hockey fan with that experience, everyone was so proud of the institution. And, you know, you sense that we, you know, we've obviously referenced it a couple of times where there, where there are two national championships in hockey. That's the impact it can have. And I think if you look at it bigger picture, you know, that's contagious. People get interested in the University of Maine and what's it take to go to school there? And oh my gosh, it's an R1. And wow, they're a land, space, and secret institution. And, you know, I think it, it just opens up more eyes. And so I know Joan talked about this in the press conference a little bit was, you know, she we were debating on the word that you use about, you know, is it the front porch? Is it this? Is it that? And, you know, she talked about athletics being a pillar. And athletics is a pillar to the university. It helps lift up the university. And I think that's that's really what it can do. Now, obviously, our president, Joan Farini Monday was instrumental in bringing you here. Can you yeah. talk about support and uh, that you get from the administration and how they see what you're trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Joan is one of the reasons why I'm here. So uh, support from her directly for athletics, for myself uh, personally to lead this department, absolutely mission critical. And, and again, part of the reason why I'm here. Um, it's been really interesting. So... Uh, she's a huge advocate for student success, you know, and that includes our student athletes. And so I think, you know, where we really synergize is over the fact that we believe that academics is the bedrock of why we're here and that, um, that athletics can really be a pillar for the institution. Right. And so, uh, she's been incredibly supportive of, of what we're doing, what we're trying to do and where we're headed. And, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed engaging with her. Um, she's a phenomenal leader, incredibly smart. And so, you know, I'm enjoying learning from her as well. Uh, but, but we wouldn't be in the position that we're in without, uh, with the Alphon gift, frankly, or anything else, uh, without her, her support uh, and direct involvement. So I'm really appreciative of the fact that I get to work for her and with her. And she's learning about all kinds of sports and what a power play is and, and all kinds of uh, ins and outs of athletics, I imagine. Uh, I, she is. And, you know, it's great. I mean, she's been at almost every, she's at almost every single men's and women's basketball game since I've been here. Uh, she's been at hockey, you know, most of the hockey games. I've pr- obviously pretty much only really been here during the winter sports season. But, yeah, she's a tremendous uh, support and advocate for our, our, our student athletes for sure. You talked about the great coaching staff. The student athletes are really doing well in the classroom, and we, we shouldn't forget that, right? I mean, it's 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 about that as much as anything. Um, what kind of ambassadors are your coaches and your student athletes for the institution, for the state, for the Maine that's on the front of their jersey? Yeah. They're they're excellent ambassadors for it. I mean, they're 
you know, they're they're traveling more than probably just about anybody uh, on this campus, right? In different places, you know, nooks and crannies of Maine, uh, in the Northeast or across the country, and you know, they've they've got the brand on all the time, uh, and so you know, they're what I've discovered um, individually and collectively is that it's a great group of people. Mm-hmm. Um, they're nice people, genuinely nice people. They're all really proud to be here and proud to represent, you know, the black bears. And so I, I think and know that when they're out, that they're sharing that pride with other people as well. And so I think it's really, you know, it's a, it's a great vehicle for outreach, you know, as as they travel and interact with other people. Um, our student athletes, um, you mentioned the grades piece. I don't want to dismiss that. That's, that's mission critical. That's the foundation of, of what we do here, right? You've got to be serious about your education. Otherwise you should you shouldn't be here you can't be here and so uh so my first week on the job we had our scholar athlete recognition and we recognized more than 330 student athletes at that we've got about 450 total 330 and we recognized for having a gpa of a 3.0 in one or both semesters last year which is pretty powerful a 3.31 uh, cumulative gpa so fantastic um so that was highlight one highlight two actually is has involved and you've seen this because you're at, you're at the games, our men's and women's basketball games that we played here at the pit. So when you look in the end zone, right, you've got our football team. There's been field hockey and soccer as well, but our football team just actively engaged in the game, not attending, watching, engaged in the game and passionate about it. And I think that just sent a great message to me about their love and care for this place and for each other. And I think how could you not be seen as a great ambassador if that's what you do is you're supporting your classmates, teammates, friends, colleagues, you know, in a way that's, you know, so vibrant. Um, it's been, that's been really, really cool to see. Yeah. What, one, uh, one thing that I've always wondered about too, is the, um, the economic impact of, of the program mm-hmm. when you're bringing teams that are, you know, at hotels in Bangor mm-hmm. and restaurants and, and bus companies and all that. I mean, yeah. there's, you know, literally hundreds of people, maybe thousands over the course of a year brought to this area, um, that has to have an economic, a beneficial economic impact. It, it absolutely does. And so, um, I've seen a couple different studies and seen a couple different data points, but, um, at a minimum, we're bringing you between 150 to 175,000 people to campus every year, just based on our athletic events. Right. So, it's a pretty phenomenal number, right, between Orono, Old Town, Bangor, I mean, other areas to drive that traffic uh, into those areas, which is fantastic. And, and I know I've seen a couple different um, uh, pieces on the economic impact just of football, for example. You know, the number of jobs it creates as it relates to game day, as it relates to moving people, you know, towards here. I mean, you're talking tens of millions of dollars, you know, just with one sport alone. Right. Um, so, so there is a, you know, certainly an influx and a positive economic impact and, and result on, on the, on the community and on the university for sure for most sports. Right. Now as, as passionate, we talked about people being passionate about mm-hmm. athletics and then that is certainly the case, but as with anything that people feel so strongly about, I'm sure there's people that are on the other side of that, yeah. that don't see the value that, that are, are not, um, seeing what what it can bring so how do you make the argument that a good solid d1 athletics program is good for the university as a whole and and for the state yeah so i think we talked about a couple of things right in terms of uh bringing people in sure um you know it's it's another form of advertising in a lot of ways um whether that's to the community you know local community regional or the state um but but you also have to recognize that it's not everybody it's not the preferred form of advertisement that everyone likes Right. There has to be something else to bring them in. And I think us just understanding that sports isn't for everyone is A-OK. But you know what? It is for a lot of people. And, it, and, it, and we do have an opportunity to capture maybe a different audience uh, than, than others might catch. So I, I think that's certainly part of it. And, you know, we're talking about economic impact. You know, we're talking about national exposure. Right. Um, we're talking about really amplifying the voice of the university in ways that it should be amplified for our R1 status, right? Land, space, sea grant. I keep coming back to those things. Those are important. But guess what? When we're playing a game on ESPN+, Plus, right, or when you're on the air, you can talk about all those things. Right. You know, you're drawing other people in who probably don't live here. Um, and so I think that's that's a huge driver for us is just providing the exposure, you know, about other things beyond just athletics here to other people. Um, it, it really is interesting, I, and I think this is where um, – where my dad being an art professor has really helped me in this field is my dad loves sports, but when he was on a college campus, his focus was trying to help support students that were in the art department. Right. And so, um, I've had, I've spent a lot of time since I've been here talking to deans, 
Um, I've met with almost every single dean on campus already, and just understanding, you know, how does athletics engage with them? How can we help them? And how can we help each other? And so I think, you know, there's a broader platform that we can all utilize and benefit from and working together with that. It's a quality of life piece, right? I mean, you, you have the Collins Center for the Arts. Um, yep. You have the School of Performing Arts and Theater and Music and, and Museums in downtown Bangor and on campus here. And this is just another thing that makes people's lives here more fun, better, uh, just more, more things to do, right? It is, and and uh, by the way, I I walked by it. I'm still trying to see if I can get in. Have you seen the 3D printed house that's on campus? I have, yeah. I'm I'm dying to go in there. I took pictures of it last week. Yep. That looks really really cool. But again, you know, all these different things, you know, culturally that that can bring people together. That there's a different interest for just about everyone here on this campus, whether it's the arts or you know engineering or business or athletics, etc. So there's there's tons of opportunity here for people. So as we as we think about wrapping up here, what 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 sort of your priorities as you say, you know you you have probably ten number one priorities yeah. on your on your list yeah. of things to do. What, what what are they as you settle in here and take us out, uh, you know, a couple of years here, however long of a of a time frame you'd like yeah. as to how you see things uh, progressing and, and moving along here. Yeah, so I think there's a couple pieces to the puzzle. I mean, we've obviously talked about the the Alphon uh, Foundation and and that gift, right? We've we've got to get that buttoned up and nailed down about what that's going to look like and when and we've got to be able to communicate that to people frankly uh, so that's that's high on the list is that going to happen in two months or eight months from now i don't know but that's high on the list um the other piece that we talked about a little bit already too is is really on the mission vision and values so i want us to be able to formalize that in some capacity and use that to be able to look every time to say this is what we're trying to accomplish here and that's how we're going to make our decisions Right. That's that's such a huge part of, of what we're talking about. And I think at the same time as that, um, we're also going to put a little bit more structure around our department, you know, policies, processes. I mean, no one wants to be the AD to come in and say, well, what'd you do? Well, we created a bunch of policies. Right. Um, but in some cases, we really need them. So, you know, we've got to figure out what the what those pieces are. And then the last component is really engagement. And I'm saying engagement from we want to get students engaged, not just student athletes. We want to get campus engaged. Um, and we want to we want to reach out right to the community in some broader sense. And when I say doing that, it's not because we want them to come to games. Of course, we do want them to come to games, but that's not why we're doing it. We want to help show them the value that we can bring, and afford them an opportunity to participate in the life of the university in whatever way they deem appropriate. But we've got to meet them where they're at, right? So that's that's part of where we're headed. You know, with those components between um, the Alphon Foundation gift, you know certainly you know the mission vision values and then the outreach piece uh, and i think all that what that's really going to mean for us bigger picture in the end is a stronger more vibrant division one athletics program that's not just hey we're division one but we're a comprehensively excellent division one athletic program that's that's where we need to head right that represents a comprehensive uh flagship university absolutely Arlington, right well, exciting times. We're, we're, we're so glad to have you here, and uh, we wish you the best of luck moving forward. Ron, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Good to see you again. Thanks, as always, for tuning us in. You can find all of our episodes on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, UMaine's YouTube page, as well as Amazon and Audible. If you have questions or comments, drop us a line at mainquestion at maine.edu. This is Ron Lisnett. We'll catch you next time on The Main Question.